Hey there, hi there, hello there, and hello. Welcome back to Mike's Hard Reviews, the show that hasn't been around since the end of December. <laughs> my name is Michael, I'm the former bartender from the Kalamazoo, Michigan area, and today we're back from my slight little break uh, following 25 Drinks of Christmas to bring you a drink of my own creation and hopefully introduce you to some new interesting flavors that you probably didn't know existed, like I didn't a short while ago. So to preface this, I find myself in a lot of situations coming behind this bar and then trying to work with flavors that I don't typically find in my regular palette. So very recently, uh, I was introduced to a substance called Pandan. I have fell in love with it, and I have since created a cocktail that I think accentuates it as a flavor and a component of the beverage in every way possible. I'm very, I'm very proud of this, I have to, I have to say. So yeah, we're talking about Pandan today and the Pandan Gin Sour, a uh, drink of my own creation. And you're probably thinking now, what the hell is Pandan? Pandan is a grass-like plant that grows in South and Southeast Asia and is very popular in their cooking. Um, uh, this is one way you can get it. You can get it in full leaves, dry, full, I think you can, you could probably find fresh leaves if you know where to go. Um, but online you can get dried leaves, powders like this, uh, flavor extracts, syrups, etc., etc., etc. ad nauseum. It's, it's really common as a flavoring component in a bunch of different cuisines, but the way that I was introduced to it was through the deli at a local um, Asian food market called Pacific Rim, which is located in Portage, Michigan. Their deli there, the Cravings Deli, has a boba menu, and one of their most popular, if not their most popular flavor, is a pandan boba with tapioca pearls, and uh, black syrup, black sugar syrup, which is a whole other thing I wanna try experimenting with later, but for now, we'll focus on the pandan. <laughs> if I were to, to describe it, I, I've, I've, I've mauled over how I think is the best way to describe this. I think the best way to phrase it without like turning people off to what it tastes like is a combination of vanilla and coconut. But the flavor is more complex than that. It's got this kind of grassy herbalness to it, kind of like uh, kind of like lemongrass. Take the flavor of lemon out of that, put in coconut and vanilla with that lemongrass kind of herbaceousness, and that is pandan. It's a really interesting, interesting component, and it was actually surprisingly easy to work with. Um, I, I tried a couple different things. I was working on a spec for a pina colada that had pandan in it, and it worked-ish, but I just ended up one day throwing something together and fine-tuned it because it was it was so good. Uh, and that's what we're going to make today. Let's go ahead and pull all of our supplies and get started on making a cocktail with some pandan. Okay, we're back. Uh, it's been like 10 minutes. You probably noticed that there weren't any bar tools up here when I started this. I was ignorant and forgot to wash them. So, adults at home, think, think ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Better than I can. <laughs> so uh, a pandan gin sour is a relatively simple cocktail that was actually to some extent inspired by a drink called the Enzio, which is an Italian aperitif cocktail featuring Campari. More specifically, it was inspired by uh, a variation of that I saw on Instagram called an Enzio Caloroso, which is um, gin, lemon juice, blanc vermouth, and Aperol. Delicious cocktail, but not what we're talking about today, unfortunately. I'll come back to it later. Now, when it came to addressing how I wanted to put Pendant into the drink, it's actually really easy to work with, especially if you get the powdered stuff I showed you earlier. You can really just mix it into, I think the recommendation is five ounces of just regular liquid, and you are good to go. I didn't think that was the most refined way to do it, so I took it two or three extra steps beyond where I needed to go, as I am wont to do when it comes to syrups. Uh, what is in this bottle is a pandan coconut or A lot of words there, but essentially what it is is a uh, two to one part um, or which I used uh, almond milk for, um, like store-bought unflavored almond milk, uh, and then two cups of granulated sugar um, alongside uh, a half a tablespoon of almond extract, one and a half ounces of coconut extract, and uh, a third of a cup of pandan powder. To sort of balance out the solids to liquids ratio, I added an extra quarter cup of almond milk um, just to make sure it was still reasonably pourable. As a result, it's still shelf stable, but won't be incredibly thick, which is something you do have to consider when working with powdered substances rather than flavor extracts. What this created is a remarkably complex uh, orjo based pandan syrup that, that sort of allows the, the flavor of what pandan is as a combination of the, those notes of grass, coconut, and vanilla, 
and then adds to it an extra blast of vanilla and this really pleasant almondy base behind it. It's delicious. And the light herbaceousness of the pandan is still noticeable. That's something that I wanted to maintain. When it came to what to mix it with, taking inspiration from the NZO, as I said, I went for a vermouth. This is specifically Blanc Vermouth. Their Blanc Vermouth and most Blanc Vermouths are sweeter vermouths than uh, what you would call a sweet vermouth, like a red vermouth, and feature lighter, more herbal notes. Really what this is doing is playing off of adjacent to those herbal notes I'm getting out of the Pandan and providing a complement to our base, which is gin, so that we've got gin botanicals and herbals coming in alongside sweetness and some citrus. I will say there are probably better uh, Blanc Vermouths to use than this. I have tasted this on its own since I started using it, and I am a fan of it. I think it's quite nice, but it's not as remarkable uh, as I feel like some others would be, like Lille Blanc, which is another Blanc Vermouth. That would probably be delicious here. This one is just kind of very boilerplate simple. We'll get the job done, and it tastes delicious but it's maybe go a little higher up if you want. Uh, our base spirit is gin, obviously. I'm going with Bombay Sapphire. Although when I did start this process of making this cocktail and developing it to where I wanted to share it, I was actually using Seagram's gin. And I know that this is bottom shelf stuff, but it's actually not horrible gin, especially if you're mixing with it. I feel like if you wanted to, you could go for this or Gordon's here to save a little bit of money on it, because you're putting a you know a fair investment into making this pandan syrup, um, and and on top of that, some specialized vermouth that you might not use in anything else. Um, so if you wanted to, you could cut cut back on on the quality of it and go to Seagram's, and it would still be fantastic. But I'm gonna step it up a little bit because I'm treating myself. It's 2.45 in the afternoon, what the fuck you mean? Five o'clock somewhere, buddy. So yeah, those are our main three ingredients and then because it's a sour, we need a citrus. I went with lime, not just because of, not just because it's green, because there's a lot of heady sweetness and herbal flavors and botanicals being introduced here. I wanted something that was sharp enough to cut through that, so lime was the obvious go-to. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and, and, and make a fucking cocktail, right? <laughs> I've been chewing your ear off. For I'm gonna start off with um, our pandan or joe. I'm gonna do this in a full ounce here. And could the case be made that you should do three quarters of an ounce? Yes, absolutely. Um, especially if you like uh, your sours more on the tart side. Next up, we need an ounce of our Blanc Vermouth. Like I said, you could probably go for Lille Blanc here. There's a couple others that were mentioned in an article I was reading that I'll try to find and put down below. The, I mean, every description that I heard for all of them, I was like, yeah, that sounds like it would work really, really well in this specific context. Out of all of them, this seems to be one of the less complex ones. I don't know, I'm just chewing your hair off now. Next up, we need an ounce and a half of gin. You could go up to two ounces, I think that's totally fine. Um, you'll get more of the emphasis of the gin when you do that, and I think you would want to go for a nicer gin when you do. But what I was trying to accomplish here was accentuating the flavors in that Orgeau, specifically the Pendon. And by going heavier on the gin, you're gonna be pulling back on some of those flavors. So just keep that in mind if you decide you wanna go ahead and proof it up a little bit further. Last but certainly not least, we need a full ounce of lime juice. So I just need to go grab some ice. We'll shake, chill, and dilute this. Now's probably a good time to mention this because I'm just gonna be pulling ice out of a mold for a sec, but I, I have an Instagram and a Tumblr. Uh, I post full recipes on the Tumblr, including the recipe for this Rougeau and the process of how I made it. Uh, and I just post cool pictures on Instagram on occasion. So follow me there if you want some more mixology content. Once we got our ice in there, we're gonna tap this down, give it a shake to chill and dilute for about 12 to 15 seconds. Once we've got that done, we're going to pull up a coupe-style glass. I've got these nice wide ones here. And I'm going to go ahead and double strain this just right on in. Drink has this just beautiful... One of my favorite things about this. It's just this beautiful, bright, lime green color. And it, it just... it looks so cool. <laughs> Once we've got that in there, we'll go ahead and do a quick garnish. Uh, I like something simple in this case, actually. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a little lime wheel, 
Got a nice little slit in that for the rim and just put that on there like so. And that, ladies and gents, is a penned on gin sour. All right, so it took a moment to clear the space off a little bit, but now that we've got this done, let's go ahead and give it a taste. Okay, immediately, I wanna know. On the nose, there's this very pleasant, sort of like plant-like nature to it. Like grass, really, like grass. Not like this really strong in your face cut grass, but like the smell of a fresh meadow, like a, like a meadow in spring. It's really, really impressive. And then there's also coconut and this kind of like coconut and lime combo. It's like a little zesty and, and, and very like kind of smooth and almost has like a creaminess to it. It's very, oh shit, spilled a little bit. Gonna drink it now. Oh God, why don't you just nut on my face? That's awesome. <laughs> hey, yo, sus. No, it's that good. So immediately the thing to notice is this sort of rolling evolution. It's kind of fun because it, it's like going in one direction and then it kind of turns on you a little bit. Um, it starts off very creamy, very sweet, mostly coconut. And then you get this kind of switch. It kind of switches that coconut slowly turns into the flavors of the pandan specifically. So you get some of that kind of natural malty coconut flavor, uh, some of that herbaceousness, the vanilla kind of context of the ingredient comes through loud and clear. And then it takes this really cool turn. It goes from this sort of sweet, creamy coconutiness to this like, to into that kind of grassy pandan flavor. And then the herbs from the Dolan come in and they're accompanied by that intense citricness of the lime juice. And it gives it this, this sort of like sweet, creamy, gentle to this like really nice balanced sour flavor. And it's, it's so hard to describe in an understandable way. It's, it's like if you were to take gin and steep limes in it almost. It's like a gimlet, that's what it's like. Gimlets uh, are two parts gin to one part uh, lime cordial. They are delicious, um, but they're very sort of kind of astringent. That's the word I'm looking for. They've got this astringency to them where they kind of feel like they're sapping the moisture out of your mouth even though they're not. This has that. The combination of the herbs, specifically I can tell, specifically from the Dolan, the Blanc Vermouth, they're combining with the lime and they're, they're sort of, they're balanced against the sweetness from the Orgeau. So what you're getting is this very like kind of raw interaction that, that just kind of takes that sweetness and kind of sucks it out. And you get this just really nice rolling complexity of flavor accompanied by an experiential shift in what you're tasting. That's so abstract and probably not a useful tasting note, but oh my God, this shit is delicious. Does the gin come in? Uh, I mean, kind of, I don't know where though. The gin's the base. So if, if, if we're talking like in the sense of volume, here's zero, here's 100. This is where the pandan and the uh, coconut or show and the lime and the Delon are, ooh. As I was talking, that kind of like uh, sour, like tingling at the sides of your tongue feeling came in. Oh, that was nice. But yeah, so if the, if the Orgeau and the, the Orgeau, the vermouth and the lime juice are all here, the gin's here. It's not at zero, but it's very much in the background. But what that's doing is Pulling back some of that sweetness from the Orgeau and giving it a little bit of character by introducing those gin botanicals. And then at the same time, providing a complementary base off of which the lime can accentuate itself and herbal notes from its botanicals that complement the Delon. That's really what is so great about this cocktail in my opinion. It's got this just super complementary nature to it. There is not a single thing in this cocktail that just dominates it. Definitely the flavors of pandan and coconut are very present, but they don't wash away anything else. 
everything has a chance to take a second in the sun, even the gin at moments, specifically when you go from like the coconut and pandan flavors into the, the lime and the vermouth. There's like this, these little sections in between those, like the transfer of flavors and how they're rolling across your palate that the gin is like, yep, I'm here. This is me and here's the people I'm with. Here's me, here's the people I'm with kind of thing. It's very interesting. It's a lot of fun. And on top of that, it is a super pretty drink that uses a really interesting ingredient that most people probably aren't going to know exists. And I think that's what I like the most about it. It's a combination you've never heard of and would probably never find in a bar, but it works excellently. Finding this and developing this, it's just wonderful. Um, this is, it's, it's these kind of experiences and these kind of creations that I have the chance to make with the skill set I've developed uh, that really make me constantly remember why I love doing this and why I'm willing to stand in front of a camera awkwardly in an apartment where nobody else is and just talking basically to myself. Um, yeah, I, just, I, I love this. this. This is the reason why I love this. Trying new things and seeing if they work. Uh, but yeah, that's that, that. That's really it. Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna finish this. Make a second one for the thumbnail. Finish that. Make a third one to go with my dinner, and then pass out, and hopefully wake up in time for work tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, that is the Pandan Gin Sour. I hopefully I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I, I've I've done I mean a couple of um, original cocktail ideas and like cocktail variations that I worked the specs out for during 25 Drinks of Christmas, but this is the first time that I'm like accentuating one explicitly. And based on the time this has taken, it's gonna be kind of a long video, longer anyway. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And I, if you stuck around at this point in the video, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, if you wanna see more, click the like button down below. It's the best way to let me know that you are actually paying attention and subscribe if you wanna get notified when I release the next video, which I'm hoping to make these somewhat of a weekly thing. Um, I do have other video ideas planned based on everything that's up here. So there's more to come. I just don't know when it'll get here. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram or Tumblr. Those links are probably appearing somewhere on the screen right now in little little text bl uh, blorps. But um, I post pictures on Instagram. That's really about it. If there's a cocktail in the photo, I'll post the spec for it in the comments, but that's about it. Tumblr's where you're gonna find full recipes, the, the story of creating things where I'm getting my inspiration from, things like that. If you're interested in seeing more of that, follow me there. Um, and reblog all my stuff so I know you're a human being because right now Tumblr's got a huge bot problem and uh, I don't think it's ever gonna get fixed. So if you guys could help me out there, that'd be great. Anyway, thank you guys all so much for watching. Welcome to the show. Cause this is what it's gonna be like now that we're not doing a <laughs> doing a holiday thing. <laughs> Cheers everybody. Drink responsibly and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.